One day I decided to try and film a female Amano shrimp having babies. So I waited until one of my many Amano shrimp was holding eggs. And then I waited some more until I could see the eyes of the baby shrimp inside the eggs. And once the eyes of the baby shrimp were visible, I set up a two and a half gallon tank with black sand, a single piece of lava rock, and a small sponge filter. I filled this tank with water from the old tank where the shrimp was living so that the water parameters would be the same in both tanks. This is done so that when I move her into the new setup, she isn't shocked by an abrupt change in water parameters. After setting up the smaller tank, I moved the mother shrimp into her new home and then waited for the eggs to start hatching. And it seemed to take forever, just like it does when you're waiting for a pregnant mother guppy to give birth. Nonetheless, this large female shrimp is probably carrying around a thousand eggs or more. She fertilized the eggs internally just as they're about to leave her body. Then she uses her legs to attach the fertilized eggs to special structures beneath her abdomen known as swimmerettes. The swimmerettes are multifunctional appendages that are used for swimming as well as for reproduction. The eggs are held in place on the swimmerettes by a strong adhesive that forms a thread-like membrane over the egg. Keeping the eggs clean and oxygenated is a high priority for the mother shrimp, so she's constantly waving her swimmerettes to keep the water around the eggs moving. But she also uses her back legs to poke at the eggs, and I would assume that this helps keep the eggs clean, but I'm not sure how effective it is. It doesn't look like it does much, and it may have a completely different purpose. She can't see what she's doing back there, so it's all done by feel, and she does end up knocking some of her eggs loose by constantly poking around with her back legs. She carries the eggs until they're fully developed and they begin to hatch, which usually takes around four to six weeks, depending on the temperature and the amount of dissolved oxygen in the water. Early one Sunday morning, I awoke to find lots of tiny shrimp bobbing around inside the aquarium. In the wild, the mono shrimp inhabit rivers where the current sweeps the baby shrimp downstream and eventually out to sea, where the tiny shrimp become part of the ocean's floating community of plankton. The tiny shrimp remain in the ocean, presumably near the coast, for about a month or so. And what this means for us fish keepers is that these baby Amano shrimp cannot survive in fresh water for more than a few days. Nonetheless, the baby shrimp float near the surface and they're attracted to light, which makes sense because they eat phytoplankton, which is also attracted to light and tends to gather near the surface. And in this early larval stage, the baby shrimp don't have any swimmerettes, so they swim by rapidly moving their legs as if they're running through the water. And to make this form of movement a little easier, instead of having claws on their legs, the legs are covered in tiny hairs that help them swim. And if you watch them closely, you'll be able to see that they can swim backwards or forwards. They can even swim upside down and backwards at the same time. During their saltwater phase, the larva will molt nine times, and with each molt, their bodies are gradually transformed from a relatively primitive larva into a juvenile that looks and acts like an adult Amano shrimp. 
After the ninth and final molt, the young shrimp can only survive in salt water for a few days, so they'll need to make the long and dangerous journey back up into a freshwater river, most likely the same river in which they were born. But these particular shrimp are trapped inside a glass box, so their journey to the sea will not be happening as Mother Nature intended. And it's unfortunate that they can't complete their life cycle in fresh water because these shrimp are one of the most useful animals in the aquarium hobby. So I would love to be able to breed them in large numbers, and apparently there are people out there who are trying to develop a way to transition the larval shrimp from freshwater to saltwater and then back again. And if they're successful, it would be good for the fish-keeping hobby as well as for the environment, because at this point, all of the Amano shrimp available are taken directly from the wild. And since these baby shrimp can't survive in fresh water for very long, and I hate to see anything good go to waste, I've decided to feed them to my baby epistogrammas. The baby epistos love the live food, so this is a nice treat for them, but it was a difficult thing to capture on film. Every day for a little over a week, I was able to remove dozens of little shrimp from this tank and feed them to my baby epistogrammas, and I was surprised by how long it took for all of her eggs to hatch once they started. But not everything was as expected in my little shrimp paradise, because it's an imperfect system, and sometimes things can go wrong. Here's our mother shrimp one week after the first babies appeared, and there seems to be a bit of trouble with some of her eggs. These eggs will eventually fall onto the substrate where they'll be eaten by all sorts of tiny invertebrates, and we'll get to that part of the story in just a few minutes. Those tiny black dots on the eggs are the eyes of the baby shrimp. Here she is, eight days after her eggs first started to hatch, and most of her eggs are now gone, but I really didn't expect it to take this long, and I'm beginning to wonder if I did something wrong. Two and a half gallons is a pretty small tank for an Amano shrimp, but I've kept the water clean, and she's been treated like a queen, so I doubt that I'm to blame, but shrimp need stability, and maybe the move was just too much. Here it's been ten days since her eggs first began to hatch, and she's finally finished, but it wasn't a complete success because some of her eggs did come loose and fall onto the substrate, and to the best of my knowledge, none of these fallen eggs hatched. Now I've removed the mother shrimp and returned her to her original home. Her discarded eggs have quickly attracted a fungus, as well as a whole bunch of tiny invertebrates that have come to feed on the eggs. This tank has only been up and running for about two or three weeks, and there's already a wide variety of tiny invertebrates that are thriving in here. I've never cleaned the substrate, and the tank's only inhabitants have been the mother shrimp and a couple small snails. If there were fish in this aquarium, we certainly wouldn't be seeing such a large number of worms and other small invertebrates. And while this might seem unattractive to many people, 
The tiny creatures on your screen have a fundamental role in maintaining a healthy and stable aquarium because they clean up dead plant material, fish waste, and uneaten food. Everything is recycled and nothing goes to waste in the natural world because there's always some form of life that's adapted to use what others have left behind. Tiny invertebrates such as the worms that you see here move in to feed on the waste products produced by the fish, the snails, and the shrimp. And when these tiny creatures die, they will in turn become food for something else. And on and on it goes down the food chain until all that's left are simple compounds and elements that are then used by bacteria and the live plants. The fact is, a healthy aquarium contains many layers of living things and each one has a special role to play in maintaining a stable environment. So don't be afraid of the worms and all the other creepy crawlies that can appear in your aquarium. Let them live and let them do what they're adapted to do. They probably know more about what's happening in the aquarium than you. Learn to use the various worms and other invertebrates that appear in your aquarium as bio-indicators of what's happening inside the tank. A rapid increase in the invertebrate population might indicate that there's too much food going into the aquarium or that something in the tank has died. So pay attention to the little things because sometimes it's the little things that matter the most.